Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today on my webinar. So I'm Robert Fuller, wildlife artist and filmmaker, and I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world. But today I'm going to talk to you about the polar regions. So I'm going to start with the North Pole in the Arctic. In 2023 I partnered with Wildfoot Travel and I went to Svalbard. And along with the incredible scenery there, I saw some of the most iconic species there, the polar bear. Way back in 2007, I was lucky enough to go down to the Antarctic regions, starting off with the Falcon Islands, moving on to South Georgia and the Antarctic Peninsula itself. And the highlight of this trip has got to be the penguins. So my trip to the Arctic started in London with a short flight to Oslo and then on another flight we landed in Svalbard itself at Longyearbyen, the main town there. So after a day of travelling we went out to explore the picturesque town and it had a really impressive high street but it wasn't long before we started spotting the wildlife there and couldn't resist filming it. So we headed down to the coast to film the barnacle geese and this was our first taste of the midnight sun. In the summer months between April and August the sun doesn't set over Svalbard and we're out filming these barnacle geese and their gorgeous goslings until gone midnight. The following morning it was time to meet our home for the next 11 days, the MVC Spirit. We had a real warm welcome on board and this luxury ship was the perfect place for our adventure. So this is our planned route, a circumnavigation of Spitsbergen, but up in the Arctic things can change, but we were very fortunate that we managed to complete this route without any trouble and see loads of wildlife on the way. So our first stop and landing along the way was New Alessand, and this was a former mining town, which is now a research centre. This place is steeped in history, but particularly famous for the starting point of Amundsen's polar expeditions. As always, I'm focused on the wildlife on these landings, and this is a Svalbard reindeer, which is a slightly different subspecies. So these are shorter and stockier with a thicker coat to survive the really harsh winters there in Svalbard. So this next landing is Fortune Jilibukta, a beautiful glacier, but I heard there were some foxes in the opposite direction and may have cubs, so I headed over there instead. Now here it was just incredible watching those foxes hunting on these steep cliffs. And this next clip is some of my favourite fox moments from the trip. Oh look at that, there's an arctic fox up there, right in the colony on the cliffs. Oh there's actually cubs up there, and that's just what I was hoping for. Next was a close-up visit to some of the most spectacular glaciers there, Monaco Bream and Emma Bream. In Norwegian, Bream means glacier, so it's a common word used up there. 
So it wasn't just the glaciers that were impressive there, it was the seabirds as well. There was literally thousands of birds feeding in front of the glacier, mainly kittiwakes, but there was a few other special birds there too. This clip shows some of the birds we saw at the glaciers, along with some other birds we saw on the trip too. This is just incredible watching the Arctic terns hunting out there. Oh, there's a skewer overhead. So we navigated around the top of Spitsbergen and then the next place I was really looking forward to, the Hinlopen Strait. The guides had told us incredible things about this leg of the journey and our first stop there was Alkafielit, which are incredible seabird colonies. In terms of geology, this is one of the most special places with these almost gothic cliffs standing high above us. So these cliffs were covered in about 60,000 pairs of Brunix guillemots, so there was action all around us. <laughs> this place is absolutely amazing. They're surrounded by Brunix guillemots. They're on the sea, flying overhead and every ledge is covered in them. So our next landing was Torrell Nesset, an incredible haul out place for walrus. And when we arrived, we weren't disappointed. There were literally hundreds of walrus there, hauled out on the beach and actually swimming around in the sea as well. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. What a sight. So we have some incredible landings throughout the trip, but even when we're traveling at sea, we come across some amazing things. And this is one of the most special sights that we saw. We were just sat down to dinner and we got a call there was a polar bear. And not only was there one polar bear, there are actually five polar bears at this sighting. So we abandoned dinner and got the zodiacs and had a really special time with this bear. So the female bear is just on the edge of the snow up there. She's got her two cubs with her. So not only did we see the polar bears while we were cruising, but we also came across whales. 
And these fin whales were really special, the second biggest whale in the world, and we spent quite a bit of time with them, watching them feeding. So this is one of the birds that I was really looking forward to see and on our last day we went to a little oak colony. So these tiny seabirds nest amongst the rocks on steep slopes and it was quite incredible being amongst the colony there, literally thousands flying overhead and the sound was just absolutely incredible coming from these birds. It really was an incredible trip seeing Svalbard at its best and I can't wait to go back there. But my next part of my talk is going to be about Antarctica. I visited the South Pole back in 2007 and I'll be going again this October. This journey also began in London before jetting off halfway around the world to South America. So I flew down to Ushuaia in Argentina, which took me close to my first stop, the Falcon Islands. So I arrived in the Falcon Islands and my first destination there was Volunteer Point. And this is the only place in the Falcon Islands where king penguins actually breed. So this colony is small compared to some of the ones on South Georgia, but it's absolutely such a special place to be. So not only is the colony there, but there's actually sandy beaches there too, which makes for great photographic opportunities. They're really comical to watch as they leave the colony, go down to the sea, and they're almost testing the water. And sometimes they think, oh, it's a bit cold today, and they just head back to the colony. So down on the beach, we can see several species of penguin. We've got Magellanic and also Gentoo penguins. It's a great place to see the scale of all of the penguins as well. We've got the Magellanic next to the king penguin there. These Magellanic penguins are also known as jackass penguins because of the noise they make. They almost sound like a brain donkey. And this was another really special place. This is Saunders Island, and this place is actually called the Neck. And not only are there lots of penguins there, there's actually a good concentration of black-browed albatross, and it's incredible to be there amongst the colony. And I was lucky enough to be there when the chicks were actually hatching, and it's such a beautiful sight. The next species I saw there was the rockhopper penguin, and as the name suggests, they hop a lot, and it's absolutely brilliant to watch them making their way up the cliffs to the colony. And just further down the shore, there's a haul out place for elephant seals. And these are really special to see. This picture gives you a real sense of scale of these elephant seals. They're absolutely huge. And this one isn't even full grown. And to see the really big beach masters, you've got to go earlier in the season, October, November, when they actually come to shore to breed. And the males fight to mate with as many females as possible.
So the next leg of the journey is to South Georgia, and this place is really special, absolutely teeming with wildlife. Even the journey over there was really special, seeing whales, albatross, and giant petrels following the boat. And this was one of the highlights of South Georgia, St. Andrews Bay, where there's about 300,000 king penguins breeding there. When you first arrive, it's almost overwhelming to see so many birds in one place. But as you actually concentrate, you actually see these magical little areas. So these chicks take over a year to reach maturity and often line the edge of the water, staying out of the way of the hustle and bustle of the main colony. So with it being an extended breeding season, there's also courting penguins there too. The courtship process is beautiful and elegant to watch, but when it comes down to mating, it's a very different thing. The male literally gets her in a headlock, trips her over onto the floor, and then mates her. As the penguins come and go from the sea, there's always something in the way, and this elephant seal gets a little slap from a young penguin. And this little guy's still covered in down, and not ready to go for a swim, but as you can see, he tried it anyway. Another mammal that's there too is the fur seal. Now these were heavily hunted in the past, but their populations have now bounced back. There's a lot of history in South Georgia too. This is Gritviken, a former whaling station, and also the place of Shackleton's grave. So the next stop on this voyage is the Antarctic Peninsula. So obviously the closer we get to the South Pole, the colder it gets and we get more ice. So the further south we go, we leave the king penguins behind, but the gentoo penguins still breed there. These small chicks need to stay close to the parents, because there's predators out there, skewers, giant petrels, always wanting to seize a moment. Now this is a stunning location, just look at those mountains. And in the foreground, we've got a colony of Adeli penguins. These Adeli penguins are caught in, and this behavior is known as sky pointing. I also managed to tick off a few of the other species of penguin I wanted to see. These chin straps, and these macaroni penguins, they're almost like rock hoppers on steroids, a bit bulkier, and even more colourful. I managed to see all the penguins I hoped to see on this trip and it was such a special adventure. I've had some of the most incredible times visiting these polar regions and it's been great in this presentation to actually share some of them with you. If you'd like to follow in my footsteps or even join me in one of these trips, I've actually got two coming up. So this October I'm heading back to South Georgia and next July, I'm actually going back to Svelbard as well. And if you'd like to get in touch about any of these trips, my email is on screen now. I've also just launched my travel club, which you can join for free. So once you've joined, you'll be kept up to date with where I'm going next. And you'll also have access to some incredible deals. And if you want to learn more about it, just visit my website. So that's the end of the webinar. Thank you for listening. So I'm going to take a few questions now. Will's just off camera and he's going to pass a few on to me. So we've got our first question comes from Gordon from Edinburgh. Gordon says, Robert, I've been following your amazing films for some time and I'd love to join you in South Georgia. I see you've traveled there before. I'm very much into birding as well as other wildlife encounters. What are we likely to see in October if I sign up? So October is the beginning of the season there, and it's also a good time to see the elephant seals and the big beach masters are in at that time of year because that's the time of year they actually pup and breed. And also we've got the big king penguins colonies there, which are just quite incredible thing to see. And uh, albatross, so South Georgia, you know, is the hub of all of the wildlife. And when you move further into Antarctica, there becomes actually less wildlife, but more beautiful scenery. So our next question comes from Jane from London. Jane says, I'm a single traveler. Would one of Robert's polar trips work well for me and how would it work, please? 
So when I've been on these trips before, there's many single travellers. You either pay for a, um, a single supplement for your own room or you get paired up with someone with similar uh, interests uh, uh, on the ship and you share a room. So yeah, it's very sociable. Um, you know, there's plenty of time at sea and things, so you get to know everyone. Uh, so yeah, it becomes quite a good fun trip, even if you're a single traveller. So our next question comes from Samantha from New York. Samantha says, Hi Robert, I recently joined your travel club. What plans do you have for future trips and what else can I expect? Hi Samantha, thank you for joining the travel club. So the next trip is South Georgia in October and next July it's Svalbard in the Arctic. For anyone else who hasn't joined the travel club, if you join up it's completely free and you get access to some brilliant deals. So the final question we've got time for is from Mary from Rutland. I came to see your gallery not long ago, lovely countryside. My friend and I have always wanted to see polar bears. It seems Svalbard would be perfect. Would we have opportunities to land? So Svalbard is a brilliant place to see polar bears. We saw nine in 10 days on our last trip and Wildfoot Travel haven't sent a customer there without them seeing a polar bear yet. So that's uh, always a good sign. And as far as landings go, we do about two a day, which is uh, you know really interesting to actually be on shore uh, in Svalbard in all these different environments that they have there. So, uh, you know, it's a super place to go. Uh, I love the Arctic regions and uh, it's definitely well worth a visit. So that's all we've got time for today and uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.